So you're going to Washington, you're thinking about maybe going to Olympic National Park, but maybe you don't know what you want to do there. Well, the good thing is, no matter who you are, it is definitely an amazing park for you. So Olympic National Park ranks on the top 10 of almost every list out there of national parks because it, is such a, it has such a variety of different atmospheres and climates and ecosystems within the park. And so it doesn't matter if you're a climber or if you're somebody who just wants to go on easy hikes, there's something in this park for you. So in this video, I talk about eight of my favorite things to do in this park. Uh, I tried to go on varying skill sets, so some of them are more rigorous hikes, some of them you can just drive up and park, but of course I couldn't name everything that is enjoyable in this park, so if you know of anything else that you are excited to do or that you have done, please remember to comment down below. Also, before we get too far into this video, if you at any point decide that you like this video and want to see more just like this one, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button. I'm traveling a lot this summer, as much as, as, much as I can, as much as I can spend my money on, so make sure you go down and click the subscribe button to see more videos like this one. So destination number one was Kalaylot Campground. As you can see here, it was very cloudy when we went. On a nice day, this is a great spot to see the sunset over the Pacific Ocean. But if it's cloudy like this, it's also nice to go down to the beach, collect driftwood, start a fire, or walk around and find some sand dollars. A little fall and die. Yeah, so this is Kalaylot Camp... Kalaylot? Kalaylot. Kalaylot Campground. Check it out, we got lots of trees all over. So in the park there are also a lot of wildlife, so here you see some Roosevelt elk uh, and some ducks right there just hanging out right on the side of the road. So after staying just one night at Kalela Campground, our next destination was Hall of Mosses in the Ho Rainforest. And we're going to camp in this area, first come first serve, this is the Ho River, and then there's a couple trails here, here, and this is the trail to Blue Glacier, but that's like a definitely a backpacking trail because it's 18 miles one way. Okay. Now this is one of the most famous hikes you might have seen. Whenever you look up Olympic National Park, you're almost definitely going to see a picture of the Ho Rainforest, specifically Hall of Mosses, where you see the classic tall evergreens covered in mosses because the Ho Rainforest is a very, very rare ecosystem being a temperate rainforest. You don't really see many of those around and they get 12 feet of rain every single year. So make sure you're going during the dry season. So Hall of Mosses is a relatively easy trail. We did it in about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, and overall, you're going to see a lot of people of varying ages on here. So it's not a difficult trail. It's not marked as something that you need to be an expert climber or hiker for. Anybody can go on this trail and enjoy this and take some amazing pictures. So there are 130 species of lichens, ferns, and mosses covering these massive evergreen trees. Uh, and of course, there's so much other wildlife here. This is an amazing place for so many different reasons, and the trees are so incredibly tall. So the Hall of Mosses trail was pretty short, and because of that, we're going to continue on to the Ho River Trail right now. We're going to go in about two and a half miles. The whole thing is like 18 miles up and back, but obviously we're not doing that today since it's already early afternoon right now. So we're going to hike this couple miles, and then we'll see. Now the next destination is sort of a longer hike as you're going along the Ho River Trail, which as you saw earlier is an 18 mile trail. We went a few miles in to get to the Mineral Creek Falls, so just a little bit farther away from the crowds yeah. of Hall of Mosses, you can get out here and really start to immerse yourself in the Ho Rainforest. Destination 4 then is the Ho River. We were camping right next to it in the Ho Rainforest Campground. And as you can see here, the river was really, really, really cold. It is glacial water coming from the top of the mountains. And you can also see the top of the mountains from this, you know, where we were right now. It's snowy on the top, it's melting coming down. So 48 degrees is very cold water, but it was so warm out we had to go for a swim.
right, so we just left the whole rainforest. Here we are at Lake Crescent. We're gonna go up a hike to Merrimere Falls and then up to, I think, Storm King Peak right now. Get some nice overlooks. Um, overall, it's a little cloudy right now as we got here. It's a little bit cooler because I think we're slightly higher in elevation. So this is the lodge area. If you're at Lake Crescent Lodge or anything like Lake Crescent Resort-ish thing, it's gonna look like this. Turn it around, check it out. So you're gonna have like that building right there and then you get these little tiny cabins over there where people can stay. Just, I guess, another option if you're not willing to go camping. So the lodge, as you can see, is a nice place to get away from the outdoors if you're trying to go inside and get a cup of coffee or a drink and just hang out by a fire for a little bit. Hey, what's up guys? Um, we're about to hike Storm King Mountain, get to the peak and hopefully catch, catch some views. Hopefully before it rains. Yeah. <laughs> Almost at one mile. Oh. Almost. Almost. Almost there. So as you can see from that footage, this was definitely a very strenuous and advanced hike. I don't recommend it for anybody not comfortable with heights. As you can see, there were ropes there, so it was a little bit dangerous at points, and then at the very top is a very narrow ridge. So we made it to Deer Park Campground, and as you can see, it's a little foggy over there. Over there, it's much more clear, and you can see the mountains. And then there are, according to this sign right here, there are three different spots. There's A, B, and C. Um, each of them, I think there's like 14 total sites up here, but really not much. So here's your luxury bathroom facility, no running water. Um, and there's little bear boxes right there. So animals don't get your food, but overall it seems like a really cool campground. Really hard to get here though. Wow, yeah, so it's so peaceful up here. There's absolutely nobody up here right now. And then way off in the distance, you can see the snowy mountains over there. Uh, actually a whole bunch of mountains with snow on them. So it's a lot colder up here than it was down where we were. It's literally right now 44 degrees. And at the bottom it was like 64 degrees. So you're gonna see a temperature drop when you come up here. And if you're gonna stay the night, you definitely want a lot of warm clothing. So Deer Park Campground is a really cool spot, although there is no ranger in the ranger station anymore. So the next thing you want to do is drive on up to the summit here. So that's the bay out there. You can barely see right there. And we got some other mountains over here. Really cool view. If there were no clouds, it would definitely be a really, really amazing view. And it already is amazing with these clouds. So next we have the Rain Shadow Loop, which is at the very top of the mountain with Deer Park. So you just keep driving about another half mile, get up to this little half mile hike again, get to some amazing views at the top.
So we're on Blue Mountain right now, and right now it's a little cloudy, but right before I started filming this, it was sunny and you could see everything, but you could see Mount Baker over there, you could see Canada, and you could see like all kinds of just mountains in every direction. You could see the ocean over there, uh, or at least the bay. So really, really cool spot if it's not cloudy, although I feel like it usually is because you're at the level of the clouds. It's like 5,800 feet up here. Correction, it's 6,010 feet according to the geology marker right like right over there. So really, really high up and you can tell the air is a little bit thinner up here. All right, Gracie, sliding down. <laughs> that was really fun. And then we got Ellen taking the smarter way. Oh shit, that was so fun though. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then we got Sean way up in the distance there. Come on. All right, guys, let's see if we can take Grace from here. Hey. Almost. So the good news is if you are not willing to make the one hour drive up to the top here and then hike up the snow to see this view, you can also go over to Hurricane Ridge, although I chose this one above Hurricane Ridge just because it's a little bit farther away from the crowds. Hurricane Ridge can be a bit crowded on, you know, a popular day like this. So if it's too crowded, check this out. So we're on our way back to Rialto Beach to stay the night there. And we stopped at one of the many little day use areas, little recreation areas on 112. And this one's actually really popular for uh, recreational crabbing. So I'm, we're gonna see if we're finding any crabs here, but I haven't seen any yet. Maybe out there a little bit more. So the reason we went this way was to get away from the main just driving along 101 through Lake Crescent. If you go back and through the park a couple times, eventually you might want to go up on 112 and stop along some of these little county parks and just get some different scenery. So next we have Rialto Beach, which is also split rock and hole in the wall. Three things sort of really close together. You can walk on the beach and camp out there. You just have to get a backwoods permit. And this is a really amazing spot to see the sunset. You'll see lots of people come out, watch the sunset and then leave. Others come out and watch and then stay. So we chose to stay the night. This is a great spot to go out and see some tide pools. Like I said, to see the sunset, to see some gray whales that migrate up from Mexico. Overall, just an amazing scenic area with a lot of wildlife. So right here you can see that is split rock right there and you can't really see the side that's split. I'll show you that in a second. But from here you will be seeing some of the tide pools during low tide and then at high tide you won't really be able to see tide pools and you're going to be a little bit farther away. I recommend if you're going here try to time it so you're here right around low tide or maybe when the tide is just going out. <laughs> that's so cool. Now the hike back there is pretty long if you're going all the way up hole in the wall and even though it is only about a mile and a half, it is through this very soft gravel that's sort of like quicksand, it makes it difficult to walk, sometimes barefoot, sometimes with the shoes, but I recommend making the walk if you can. Now all the way out here at hole in the wall, this is where you're going to need a little bit of rock climbing if you're coming at high tide, as we did, this is like mid to high tide right now, and so I had to do a little bit of rock scrambling, a little bit of rock climbing. Uh, just to get around into hole in the wall. I don't recommend this if you're not comfortable with it. Like I said, if you come at low tide, it's much easier to get out there. So this is a great place to see otters, sea lions, sea anemone, uh, tide pools with starfish in them, and like I said, so much more wildlife just on this simple little spot with the tide pools at hole in the wall. This is the hole in the wall, this. And we're in the wall. The green thing? Oh yeah, there it is, look at that. Okay. 
Hey Grace. So here we were climbing a little bit more. Again, I don't recommend this. We were kind of high up. It's dangerous. So this was a dumb idea. You guys should not be doing this. Um, but some amazing views over there, as you can see, of the Pacific Ocean and the surrounding shoreline. We're really high up right now. Yeah. You can't hear us though. No. So lastly, we hiked back the mile and a half to Rialto Beach, where we made our dinner in one of the fire pits. And then we hiked back again a mile and a half to our campsite. Uh, back at Hole in the Wall. Thank you.